All right, I'm here with an updated look at my Nintendo Switch collection for the end of 2023 going into 2024. Um, if you haven't checked out the Game Room Tour video uh, that went up last week, that was this year's Game Room Tour, what things are looking like. But I am getting into the Switch collection now, and the Switch is just, it keeps on trucking. I think we're heading into a, a final year pretty clearly just with what the lineup looks like, but there's still some big stuff, the Thousand Year Door remake, Metroid Prime 4, whatever the heck that is. We got some big stuff coming in, but I mean, I could probably, you know, I'm not, I like the Switch quite a bit. Um, you know, the hardware leaves much to be desired, but I get it um, since it is technically a handheld. I don't ever use it in handheld mode. I'm always using it as a console. And as a console, I like it, although I, I, I can't help but think like, all right, it's probably about time for some new hardware. But everything else about I think is great. Um, I like the controller a lot. I like uh, just the interface. I don't like the eShop. It's slow as, as poison. And it just is like the, wor the worst stuff on there now. It's cluttered with so much horrible garbage. I, I don't know what they're doing there. But Switch Library, really good. Um, a lot of shovelware, unfortunately, but a ton of great stuff. And my collection doesn't really even... I have well over 100 games. I think over 120, maybe. And it doesn't even really scratch the surface of all this stuff there. Because it's just, there's so much Switch stuff coming out. And all, all so much limited run stuff. And, and all this kind of cool stuff. That you got to kind of, you know, draw the line somewhere. So, getting into the Switch collection. First game, <clears throat> Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, um, which I really like that, what that's what they ended up calling it. Um, but cool to see Advance Wars come back. I don't know how well this did. Um, it would be neat to maybe get Advance Wars again. Um, Way Forward developed this one, which is an interesting choice to uh, develop a, a remake of the Advance Wars games. But, um, it's fun. I like it. Uh, it's a little bit simple. The problem with this one, I think, is it was originally supposed to come out in 2022, um, but they, because of the Ukraine war, of all things, they um, they delayed it, which, I mean, it makes sense. They delayed it, like, well over a year, um, which I get why they did it, but at the same time, it's just kind of an odd sentence. Um, Advanced Wars 1 came out on September 10th, 20, 2001. Um, September 10th, 2001 is when Advance Wars 1 came out in the United States, so um, I don't know. Advance Wars, they got lucky last time, so they weren't so lucky this time, maybe? I don't know. But uh, I just, it came out 2023, so I played Fire Emblem Engage, and then it came out, you know, a few months later, and I was like, I, I kind of had my strategy game fixed, so I didn't play through both of these, but what I did play, I was like, yeah, this is fun. I'd like to go back to it at some point, but, you know, you know how that is. <clears throat> Uh, we got AI the Somnium Files and AI the Somnium Files, the Nirvana Initiative. <clears throat> so these are uh, adventure games from uh, Spike Chunsoft, written by uh, Kotaro Uchikoshi, who did the Zero Escape games. And I really like this duology currently. There will probably be more, but I really like this series a lot. It's very interesting. Um, it is pretty high budget for a Japanese adventure game from Spike Chunsoft and uh, really cool stories, really interesting ideas for stories. The second one goes kind of sicko mode like there. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected it to go kind of where it goes and what it delves into. It's really cool. Um, I like these games quite a bit. I highly recommend them. If you like Danganronpa, stuff like that, Ace Attorney, these would definitely be up your alley. I recommend these ones quite a bit. I think they're both great. But, I know, Spike Chunsoft's really killing it lately. America's Greatest Game Shows, Wheel of Fortune in Jeopardy. Um, this was a white elephant gift exchange that I got from beloved Monster Hunter YouTuber Sky85. And uh, I will uh, I will obliterate anybody um, at any kind of trivia game. Uh, there's something wrong with me, I don't know why. Animal Crossing New Horizons. So I my copy is sealed. I got it digitally just so it would always be on my Switch. But obviously, you know, the, I played a ton of this game, especially when it came out, because uh, if you remember what happened when it came out, um, not much to do then. So uh, I feel like that's the main problem with New Horizons is that a lot of people fell off it quick because they were playing it for like hours and hours and hours on end um, rather than, you know, playing it maybe half hour a day, you know. People were playing it like several hours a day for a couple months, and then we're like, oh, there's there's not much to do. But I also think that there was a little bit 
of a lack of content compared to something like New Leaf. And I still think New Leaf is probably the best of the Animal Crossing series, but New Horizon is still um, really good. And I do like it quite a bit, but I don't know. Anonymous Code. So this is part of the Science Adventure series. Uh, I started this one up. I played first couple hours. I've played all the other Science Adventure games. Um, and this is the most recent one released, I think, last year in Japan and this year here in the United States a couple months ago. Uh, and I'm going to need to restart it just because I was... Uh, I started it up and then some other stuff came up and I didn't get back to it. Now I'm kind of just like, I don't remember what happened here. So I'm going to need to restart it. But what I played of it so far, I thought was really cool. Um, kind of a step up in presentation from some of the previous science adventure games, really cool aesthetic and art style. And uh, what I was seeing out of the story, I was like, this is going to be pretty interesting. I always like science adventure kind of delves into different conspiracies and conspiracy theories. And the one that they kind of chose to delve into um, in anonymous code is, not something I would have expected them to delve into, but it was pretty cool. So I want to get back to that one. It's high on the backlog list, but um, I will definitely get back to it at some point because I'm a big fan of that series. ARMS. I think ARMS was fun. Um, it kind of feels like if Splatoon had like the bad ending where it just didn't kind of pick up as, as much. Um, it was kind of light on content when it came out. It, the Nintendo cycle this generation with their kind of sports, their quote-unquote live service games where they you know, release them a little bit bare bones and then they fill it in later. Um, that really doesn't jive with me because a lot of the times I'm like, man, it's six months later. You're still updating this. Like, I don't know if I want to, I'm not going back to Mario Tennis Aces. Are you kidding me? Because you added Pauline? Like, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> but I liked ARMS and I feel like they could do a sequel um, and really make it a cool series. Um, just add some more single player content. I think the gameplay is really fun. So, I mean, if they were to make it Added some new characters, added some single-player content, a more robust single-player component. I think ARMS could be a, a you know a big series. I, I think it's pretty solid. Astral Chain, one of my more um, shamed games that I've not beaten. And I'd like to go back to it, but you know. Um, this is a platinum uh, action, uh, character action game. And what I played of it was awesome. And it's one of the better-looking games on Switch. It is 30 FPS. Um, and we'll kind of see with like Bayonetta 3 what <laughs> the trade-off between 30 and, FP and 60 FPS when, when it comes to a uh, character action game on Switch. But um, I do really like Astral Chain when I played of it. I really like the aesthetic. And uh, yeah, I, I want to see them do more with that. I, Platinum really works best when they're, you know, with someone like Nintendo. Um They've been, you know, no doubt to anyone, they've been struggling lately, and now Kamiya's left, so who knows what's going to be up with them. Kamiya also left during that Project GG game that's, like, apparently was his whole thing, so who knows what's up with them. They've been struggling a bit, and they work well with Nintendo. I think it's something they should probably look into more, but I don't know. We'll have to see what comes from them. Atelier Ryza, Ever Darkness, and The Secret Hideout. There are three of these games now. I got the first one because I had heard that this... I, I was always under the impression that Atelier was, like, kind of crap because they were during... And people are going to, like, hate me for that, but during the PS3 and Vita generation, it felt like they were putting out an Atelier game, like, every other month. And they they weren't exactly well, you know, regarded, um, reviewed reviews-wise. So Atelier Ryza was kind of the first one to kind of get really good reviews. Um, and, you know... I wanted to give it a shot, and I got it, I think, for cheap. It was also kind of hard to get for a while, like it was out of print, but I've just not played it. Got some Bayonetta here. Bayonetta, when they released it as just a standalone. This is still sealed. I've played Bayonetta before. I'm actually not huge on the first Bayonetta. I think it's, I don't know. I'm just not huge on it. It's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> some of the gameplay is... Feels like there's some weird difficulty spikes. It's not exactly the most balanced, but it's it's a classic at this point, and it's definitely like a you know one of the first big thing out of platinum. Really, um, definitely leaves an impression. Really cool uh, game, and I think probably Bayonetta two is the best Bayonetta game. Um, Bayonetta three. I don't have Bayonetta two on Switch. I didn't buy it. I, I played it on Wii U. Um, I. I'd like to at some point get a copy of it so I can at least finish out the trilogy. But Bayonetta 3, I do like, but it has a lot of things I don't like. 
I will say, I, I think I'm done. I'm ready for them to be done with Bayonetta. I know they keep saying, like, oh, we can tell more stories. And I'm like, you don't have to. <laughs> I think we're good. I... I uh, this might only be me, but I feel like the Bayonetta story is the stories in these games is like the worst story of all time. Like the Bayonetta three story might be the worst story I've ever seen in any video game. Like I, it's, it's terrible. Um, and like the, <laughs> there's a couple of good characters, you know, Bayonetta's fun and, and, um, what's his name? Rodan is fun, but <laughs> their characters are terrible. Like they, that greasy Italian guy. I hate that guy. Um, so I hate that weird sex pervert guy too. I hate that guy. Um, I think we could probably, you know, move on to something else and get a, another character action game. It, the, the idea is fun, but it's like, I don't know, but Bayonetta three, I, I do think it's the character action gameplay as Bayonetta, not as the second character that wasn't as big on that character, um, how they played, but as Bayonetta, the character action gameplay is like second to none it's really really solid it's really strong and graphically it's a huge step down from astral chain but it is 60 frames per second so you either get good graphics in 30 fps or not so hot graphics in 60 fps so um either way still a solid game i would say two is the best of the bayonetta series i also got this one it was on woot um like clearanced out for i think like 25 dollars 30 dollars bayonetta origins haven't played it yet i've actually heard this one's pretty good it's a lot different um i think this game sold like five copies and i get why because it's like i don't know what did you expect it's like a spin <laughs> it's like a weird spin-off it's 60 dollars bayonetta 3 is 60 dollars it's like i don't know blaze blue blaze blue cross tag battle um this is a <clears throat> A uh, fighting game, crossover fighting game from Arc System Works, who is a solid fighting game company. Um, I mainly got it because it has Persona 4 in it, uh, but there's also what th that Rooster Teeth thing that they do, and Blaze Blue and Undernight in Cell, or whatever that's called. Um, so, I'm not an expert at that, but I, I like the Persona 4 stuff, and uh, I always like, I like Arc System Works, I really like their pixel art. Like, they s stayed devoted to pixel art when everyone moved to kind of cheap-looking um you know cg and i appreciate that not cg like 3d models but bomb rush cyberfunk i just got this one so i haven't gotten a chance to play it yet i waited for the physical release of this one um but i've heard great things uh this is the kind of spiritual successor to jet set radio which i really like i'm a big fan of jet grind radio on dreamcast um so this is like that spiritual successor i've heard great things looking forward to giving it a shot I believe that was kickstarted. I might be wrong. I think they kickstarted that game though. I don't remember. Bravely Default Two. Haven't played this one. I I don't. I bought this because it was on on sale. I bought it. It was clearance at Walmart, and I'm like, what a deal. Um, I didn't like the first Bravely Default very much. I didn't play Bravely Second, and uh, I haven't played Bravely Default Two. So you can. I have a problem. It's okay. Cadence of Hyrule, I have this sealed. I have it also. I, I bought it when it came out digitally, and then they made a physical. And because I collect every Zelda game, I got this. Um, I'm not into roguelikes. Like, that's like probably my least favorite genre of anything. I just They frustrate me. I just don't like that kind of gameplay. So this isn't really for me, but the soundtrack uh, alone makes it worth it just because the soundtrack is like incredible. So I, recogn I recommend going on YouTube and looking up the soundtrack for this game because... Uh, that's probably the best part, in my opinion. Capcom Fighting Collection. Uh, this is still sealed, too. But this is a really cool um, collection of fighting games. A lot of classics. A lot of the, like, Darkstalker stuff. Um, a lot of old Street Fighters. Just some really cool stuff on here. I got this one, I think, on sale or, or something. I got it for cheap, whatever it was. Um, I think I maybe trade credit or something. It was one I wanted to have, but one of those days I'll just kind of pop it open and mess around with some fighting games when I'm in the mood, but... Mood has not struck. Oh, I got my keychain fell out. Uh, Catherine Fullbody. Um, Catherine Fullbody is awesome. I think Catherine's an awesome game, and I think Catherine Fullbody is just, you know, uh, I, I like it. You know, I know people don't like the third character or whatever. I just like it. I feel like it's just a good, accessible way of playing it. I don't feel like the third character really takes anything away from the game at all so if you don't like it like it's not really a big deal uh, and it's still a fantastic game just one of the most unique most interesting games um from the persona studio uh p studio in between persona 4 and 5 and if you're a persona fan and you've not played this one i think you can see a lot of like 
proto Persona 5 in this game as well. So highly recommended. And the Switch port is like perfect. There's there's you know came to PS4 first, but the Switch port is per. I I messed around. I played through it a couple times because there's different you know um, routes you can take and story routes and everything. And I did a story route on place on the Switch version, and it's almost identical to PS4. So. Chaos Head Double Pack. So this is Chaos Head Noah and Chaos Child. So these are parts of the Science Adventure series. This didn't get a PlayStation release. I think it's kind of because um, the <laughs> the content's kind of extreme. It got banned from Switch as well. So it's interesting that uh, it came... Or it got banned from Steam. So it's interesting that like Switch didn't have any uh, caveats. Um, although I think the, the original version of the game... This is censored from the original version of the game. Um... And it's nothing like, you know, terrible, but it's <laughs> it's a visual novel, so you can't go too crazy. But it is violent, um, if nothing else. The first game, um, I mean, they both are, but Chaos Head Noah is probably... Chaos Head Noah is the first of the science adventure games. Um, so, so it's before Steins Gate and everything, and it is... Uh, Good. I, I like it a lot. It's it's interesting is that when I played it, I was like kind of like fed up with it. I'm like, this kind of sucks. Like this character, the, the main character, this guy's like the Chris Chan of video game protagonists. And this kind of sucks. But I still think about it. I played through this game back in April and I still think about it like this game. I'm like, yeah, this is, that was really good. That was really cool. And Chaos Child 2, I played that a few months later and I really liked it as well. Um, I thought it was pretty solid and I, I enjoyed it quite as well. Um, they're both, you know, very good games. And I would say Chaos Child is a better game, but I don't know. Both awesome. If you like visual novels, or if you're interested in getting to, sci to science adventure, this is where you should start. Um, I'm speaking to like four people when I talk about that stupid series. But Collection of Mana. I got this one for cheap. Uh, cool to have. I like having these collections just so I know, like, oh, if I ever want to throw on Secret of Mana, I have it right here. I have the other ones, too. So... Really cool. This was the first time we got Second Densetsu 3 here in the United States. Um, so we got it, and then we got that remake that I don't think people are super hot on, but we got the original version as well. So I thought that was really cool that they did that. Danganronpa Decadence. So big Danganronpa fan. Um, cool to have it finally on Switch. I played them all on Vita, so having them on a handheld is like perfect for the series, but... Um, yeah, fantastic games. Like you know, I recommend them. I if you've not played them, just just do it. If you're interested in anything like that, if you're interested in adventure games like that, just do it. <sighs> we got here Deadly Premonition Origins. Um, so this is just a port of the 360 game De Deadly Premonition. Um, bizarre, just bizarre, low budget game from Swery 65. Um, and this isn't the best port of it, but it's serviceable. It's not like as bad as like the PS3 port or the PC port or anything, but it's it's you're best off playing it on 360. Funny and funnily enough, um, and it is I think a game that you have to play if you enjoy video games. Just from the idea of this game is so bad, but it's also incredible. It's also great. Like it's really one of the most interesting games you could play, and it's one of those games where you can see that a team <laughs> with a huge idea and a ton of ambition. And a ton of passion made something with like five dollars and like a paperclip budget um, because <laughs> it's something else. It's so bizarre. It's so charming. Uh, really, I would say one of the best games of all time. That's also a not a very good game. Um, Deadly Premonition Two is just terrible. I, I, they, I don't know. It's just bad. Uh, like there's nothing really even charming about it. It's just bad. Um, I don't know really what else to say. A, a game that, you know, if you put up... It's like a game where you're like, I was playing it. I'm like, I'm putting up with it. It's, you know, it's technically terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. But, you know, the story could go somewhere. And then the story feels like it doesn't have a second act. So it just is terrible. It falls apart. It's horrible. Um, but Deadly Premonition, worth playing for sure. Dead Dead 2E Premonition, you're better off not. Um yeah, I don't know. Swery65 follows me on Twitter. He follows like 70,000 people on Twitter, but he follows me, so... I don't know. Detective Pikachu Returns. I still am of the mind that Detective Pikachu should smoke crack. Uh, and if you think that's the case, um, leave a comment down below. 
this guy of five complete um so this was like an early switch game i think it came out like the month after the switch came out so i was kind of looking for like an rpg or something to check out i'd never checked out this guy before and i played it and i was it's just not for me not my thing um i just couldn't get into it so not a this guy a fan Uh, Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. This is like a nice little game. Um, it's really friendly and fun. You get to just hang out with your friends and stuff. Uh, really pleasant and nothing bad happens there. Um, just an overall good time. Dragon Quest XI S. Um, this is another one I started up and wasn't in the right kind of mind space. I want to really play this game because I've heard it's great. Um, I really want to dive into this one, so it's on the it's on the JRPG backlog. But I just also am like, man, this game is long. <laughs> this game's very long, so you know it's on the backlog. But I got to be really in the mood for some like traditional turn based JRPG. Uh, Dragon Quest Treasures. I got this on, this one on sale at GameStop a couple months ago. I haven't gotten, given it a chance yet. Um, I've heard it's kind of fun, but I don't know. These Dragon Quest spinoffs are kind of hit or miss. I like Dragon Quest Builders. I like that one. I never played the second one. I only played the first one on PS4. Skyrim on Switch, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Um, this was like a big deal when this came to Switch because we're like, heck yeah, we're getting the big boy games on Nintendo now. Uh, I had never played Skyrim, so I gave it a shot. I don't think it's really my thing. I, I think I don't, I just think Bethesda specifically games aren't my thing. Because I had this whole thing where I'm like, okay, I just, I tried Fallout 4, I tried this, I'm like, this is not my thing. Maybe I don't like Western RPGs. And then I played um, Cyberpunk, and I'm like, oh yeah, no, I like this. So maybe it's just Bethesda, or maybe it's just, uh, I don't know, something else. Um, the dark cover made my, my focus go all weird again, but maybe uh, maybe that's part of it too. I just hope you guys are comfortable because this is just going to, this is going to be a long video. Um, this is going to be well over an hour, uh, <laughs> judging by how many games I have left. So moving on, got this one in Japan when I was there in May, Fatal Frame 4. So I went to go play this one. I thought this one had English on it. Um, this is the more recent one that, cause I also have Fatal Frame 5. So Fatal Frame 4 on Switch released actually be, um, after Fatal Frame 5 released on Switch. And I went to go play this one because I thought it had English because I knew Fatal Frame 5 had English on it. It didn't have English on it, so I was like, ah, darn. Uh, but cool to have. I want to get into this series. I've never really given it a go. Um, and I'm a big horror game fan. I feel like this would be up my alley. Uh, I wanted to play Fatal Frame 1, and I have that on original Xbox. And then I powered up my original Xbox. It wasn't reading discs. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, I really don't. Maybe I'm not meant to play Fatal Frame. But... Um, Fatal Frame 5 was a Wii U game, and uh, I think three people bought it, so they, they ported it over, and then they probably ported over Fatal Frame 4, um, once this one I think did pretty well. Uh, Fatal Frame 4 actually was developed partially by some Nintendo, and, and also Grasshopper, which I find interesting, so something to consider there <clears throat> as well, but, uh, these games were both released, uh, digital only in the United States on the Switch, uh, so that's why I got copies of them, but I was hoping... You know, I could just also play them, but I can't do that with four. So I'll have to get that on the eShop when I ever... I'll probably get it next time it goes on sale or something. Final Fantasy X and X-2 Remaster. This is a pretty good, um, you know, port of the HD remaster of these games. I really like Final Fantasy X. Still never played Final Fantasy X-2. Um, maybe one day. Got some Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Three Houses is, I think, really, really strong game. It's a little bit ugly graphically, but it's very... <clears throat> it's a huge game. It is very content-rich, and I would say top three Switch game for sure. Um, I really like it a lot, and I just... Really impressed with it. I was really impressed with story. I was really impressed with just gameplay, how much there was to do, and just how high quality it was. Um, and aside from, you know, Koei Tecmo's signature, no anti-aliasing, and a little bit jagged graphics. Um, very high quality game. Uh, and then we have Fire Emblem Engage, which came out earlier this year. I feel like kind of a forgotten release, really. But Fire Emblem Engage, I think from the game, the gameplay is great. 
Um, and, but it's just such a big step down in the story. It was like, I don't know. It, it was like watching... It's like Fire Emblem Three Houses was like, you're watching like, I don't know, Game of Thrones. I've never watched Game of Thrones, but just bear with me. And then Fire Emblem Engages, you're watching like the Ninja Turtles. It's like a Saturday morning cartoon compared to the freaking uh, Three Houses. So the story was a big letdown. It was just kind of stupid. Um, <clears throat> I fell I started falling asleep during the story. Um, <laughs> and so, like during cutscenes, I was falling asleep. So that can probably tell you about how... How interested I was but graphically it's one of the best switch games it's actually like you know 1080p looks really good looks like a normal video game with no <laughs> caveats um <clears throat> I still liked I don't remember any of the characters which is a shame because Fire Emblem Three Houses had great characters but I liked the gameplay I think the gameplay was awesome um and just a bit weaker on a lot of the other aspects and then we have the Musos Fire Emblem Warriors Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes uh cool that they did these but, you know, as a Muso fan, um, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge Muso fan, I should say. So, uh, not exactly my thing, but cool that they did them. Um, fire, they have, you know, an interesting, Fire Emblem Warriors has an interesting take on just, like, trying to add the strategy to the, the, uh, Muso combat, but it's just, at the end of the day, I, I can only take so much of it. I'm not a huge fan. Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, so I played through <clears throat> these ones. This one's sealed because I played through it on PS4, um, but I wanted to have the physical copy of it. And these games are awesome. Um, these were Japan exclusive for the longest time. They came out, I think, 2015 and 2017 over there on 3DS, and then we finally got them 2021 over here uh, in just one package. And they are superb. Um, the first game's not my favorite. It has some good cases, but the second game, I would say, is probably a top three Ace Attorney game overall. Um, it's really strong. This is Shu Takumi, so the original Ace Attorney character, creator. Um, so he did the trilogy, he did Apollo Justice, and then a different, you know, mastermind took over five and six while he did the greatest, he did the blatant crossover, and then great Ace Attorney games. Um, and they're, they're stellar. Sherlock Holmes is in them, but they call him Herlock Sholmes to get away from... I don't know, the the Arthur Conan Doyle estate had some problem with it, I guess. So he's Herlock Holmes, and now when I see Sherlock Holmes, it doesn't look right. Fire Emblem Warriors Age of Calamity. Um, didn't run the best, but uh, played a little bit of it. It's a cool idea to try to make it, but I wish they would have kind of gone in a little bit further. Like, the idea that it's like, oh, this is a non-canon, you know, it happened in a parallel universe thing is, like, kind of lame. They could have done a cool you know, prequel story to Breath of the Wild in this one, and I feel like they kind of whipped out a little bit, but... Oh, well. Hyrule, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. So just, you know, the Wii U and 3DS content I'll put into one. Because I collect every Zelda game, I got this one with some trade credit a long time ago when it came out. <clears throat> Kirby and the Forgotten Land. One of the probably most notable absences in my switch library so far from first party nintendo is kirby or nintendo published games hal's not first party but you know what i mean is kirby star allies i was just a little bit tired of kirby i don't know just i didn't have enough but kirby and forgotten land is a 3d platformer and uh i feel like they should have done this a long time ago because i really liked this game a lot i thought it was a lot of fun uh, it's still not very difficult, but the level design is pretty engaging and and keeps itself interesting. The different little gimmicks and stuff in each level are fun. Um, so this one's really, really strong. Really good game. Um, and maybe I'll, you know, get Star Allies someday, but it's not high on the list of priorities. Um, I think I've seen everything I need to see there. This is... Uh, Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series. So this is uh, like a kind of a HD... Um, re I guess it's like more of a remake. Um, I wish we had better terms describing what's an HD remake versus a remaster versus a reimagining, all that kind of stuff. I have kind of my own ideas, but this is, I guess, a remake of the Klonoa games, Klonoa 1 and 2. And these games are fun. I feel like Klonoa, it's just fun. You know, I'm not sitting here being like, this is better than Mario. This is on the same level as Mario, but... Um, fun little platformer series. Uh, the first game is really expensive on PlayStation 1 now, so this is an easy way to play it. But... Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series is like the first, I think the only game that has a slightly different font than everything else, and it, it, it kind of bothers me. I don't know. 
L.A. Noir. Um, I liked this one. I know people kind of hated this one back in the day, um, but I had never played it till it came to Switch, and I was just interested. It was kind of when that thing was like third-party games coming to the Nintendo. I gotta get this, and I liked this one. Um, Team Bondi is not around anymore, so they we're never going to see what they do again, but I think this is a really interesting game. Um, super cool. We're still going. I got a lot of Trails games. I've explained this before. I got Trails from Zeros. I have um, Trails from Azure coming in, too, from Video Games Plus. That one came out, and then it feels like they printed three copies. But then uh, Video Games Plus did a reprint, so I have that one coming in, but I don't have it yet. Trails from Zero is like a, 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 some kind of... I don't know. Then there's Trails into Reverie. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this series. I played Trails from Cold, Trail of Cold Steel in 2016, and I really liked it. And then I, I started up Trails of Cold Steel 2 and didn't finish it. And then from there, I was kept just going like, oh, why is the lighting so crazy? Um, from there, then, I would just kept going spiraling downhill, and I buy every Trails game when it comes out, even though um, I never catch up. I just want to get them before... Uh, you know, they go out of print because I'm like, one day I'm going to do these because there's Trails from Zero and then Trails to Azure are like one saga and then there's another saga and then they all come into uh, Trails into Reverie. Um, and I like this series. I like what they're doing and everything I know about it is super cool and everything I've played of it is super cool, but um, they're really long and they're kind of intimidating me. So I also have... Uh, Cold Steel 3, Cold Steel 4, and uh, Nyuta Boundless Trails, which this one's more standalone to my understanding. This isn't technically a Legend of Heroes game. Um, this is an action RPG for the PSP from Falcom. Uh, and there's a great YouTube video from a channel called Bowl of Lentils that's a history of Falcom. Super interesting, super well done. Probably the most underrated channel in all of YouTube for the documentaries that they do. Um, so definitely recommend that channel. Got some Zelda. We got here Breath of the Wild. And we got here Tears of the Kingdom. Um, haters might hate that I've not, I never beat Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I'd like to get back to it, but I, I'm going to be honest. I like these games. I like this style of Zelda, but I kind of wish they would have just <laughs> stuck to the old style of Zelda. Um, I like I, I, I like them. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I'm not as huge on them as a lot of people are. Um, but I just feel like I, I, I prefer the more, I don't know, I would have preferred something a little bit more, uh, not quite as linear as something like Skyward Sword, but just something that's a little bit more uh, along the lines of the traditional temples. And there are temples in Tears of the Kingdom, so I appreciate that. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't, but, uh, and that's one of the big reasons I like Tears of the Kingdom better. But overall, I think they're still great games. It's just, I don't know, they're not exactly what I would like out of of classic Zelda. They're not exactly, you know, what I want to see out of Ocarina of Time or, or Wind Waker, which are like my favorites, but I still think they're great. Um, Link's Awakening. I really like this little remake here. Um, great art style, really charming little art style. And I'd like to see them continue maybe remaking the Oracle games. I've never played those ones all the way through before. That would be cool. Um, but I like this game quite a bit. I think it's pretty fun. That's a little bit weird. It's very charming. Um, and this remake really kind of keeps that a lot of that charm intact from the Game Boy version, which is awesome. And then Skyward Sword, which is a game on the Wii that I was really excited for when it came out. I got it day one, um, back when Nintendo used to release games on Sunday, um, which was weird. Uh, I remember getting it and then kind of being like, oh, oh no, like I don't like the motion controls. The, there's a lot of hand holding. It's a lot of you know nonsense. And kind of my opinion was soured on it. And then coming back to it with Skyward Sword HD, I played it on the Pro Controller. Um, <clears throat> you know, they have a lot of quality of life changes. I ended up really liking it a lot more. I don't love it, um, but I think it does have some of the best temples in all of Zelda uh, and the best dungeons in all of Zelda. But then you, in between, I think a lot of this stuff is terrible. Like I'm swimming around collecting tadpoles and the freaking with one place it's, it's it's not good like there's a lot of stuff in between that's still not great but overall i would say that it's a pretty great zelda game um and i, I like this hd version of it a lot tantalus uh does these hd zelda 
Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, and they made a funky barn for Wii U, which is probably one of the top ten great games of all time. Uh, Live Alive. I started this one up, and I think I, I did, like, one of the... Because I, I really like how this is, like, a bunch of different little stories combined into one, and I did one of them. Um, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, this will be cool to just kind of throw throw on in between games while I'm waiting for something new to come out and just play one of these. I like that HD 2D art style a lot, and it's really cool that they brought this game, which never came out in the United States, from Super Famicom to Switch in that art style. Super awesome. Luigi's Mansion 3, like a sleeper. This is like a sleeper top 10 Switch games. Um, one of the best. This game is really good and uh, a lot of fun. And I, I, I think Next Level Games is a solid studio. They got purchased after this one from Nintendo, which is very rare from Nintendo. Um, but I think they're really te technologically uh, advanced with a lot of Nintendo stuff. This is still one of the better looking Switch games, especially when it comes to animations and everything, and I just think it's overall really fun, and I'm a big fan of Gooigi. I, I can't I can't lie, I can't front, I love Gooigi. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Um, I like these games quite a bit, and I find that shocking, because the Rabbids, I just don't even, I don't know anything about these guys. Anytime I'd ever see them, I would just, I don't know, they're vile. I kind of hate them. But then this game, these games come around and I'm like, these are really solid. Um, and I would say the second game is the one worth playing. The second game is, it makes the first game almost look like a tech demo or something. The second game is awesome. Another probably sleeper top 10 games on the Switch. Um, the second game is really, really good. But these are just, you know, strategy games, kind of like XCOM kind of type game. And I think they're a lot of fun a lot of uh really quality just work put into these and they the team over at ubisoft milan um i'd like to see them do more i guess in the nintendo space if ubisoft's gonna let that happen not just cranking away at some assassin's creed dlc or something because they made uh a good game and a very great game for the switch so highly recommended and you can get these for pretty cheap because they're published by Ubisoft, so they actually go on sale, unlike games published by Nintendo. Fun fact. Uh, Mario Golf Super Rush. Uh, this is the, probably my favorite of the sports games um, on Switch. And it's, uh, once again, it launched Bare Bones. I mean, you've heard this story before. It launched Bare Bones, and then they added content. And I think it's pretty solid. It's fun to play with friends online. I wouldn't recommend it if you don't have fun as friends to play with online. The single player content is not good, but if you have friends who will play it with you online on like a Discord call or something, it is uh, it's a good time. Something to do in the background. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I've said it before. I've been making YouTube videos since 2014. Every Wii U collection video I did for years had stuff to say about Mario Kart 8. Every Switch <laughs> collection I've said now for nine years has had stuff to say about Mario Kart 8. I've talked so much about Mario Kart 8. I think it's awesome. I think it's a lot of fun. And I really like what they've done with the DLC the first time around. And then adding it to Deluxe. But then all this DLC that came out, you know, just this past year. It's been really a lot of fun. And uh, it's a very <laughs> comprehensive Mario Kart game. All right. We're, I think, maybe halfway through. So we're going to keep going. This is just going to be a long video. If you're some way at the halfway point... Just leave a comment, and then we'll do another check-in at the end of the video for uh, everyone who made it ha all the way. But this is going to be a long one. And I'm sorry if the lighting's weird. I don't know why. My camera doesn't like the all the red of the Switch, so we're going to just have to make do, I guess. Uh, Mario Party Superstars. Uh, this is this the Mario Party game people have been asking for after like a decade of bad Mario Parties. And it's just old Mario Party stuff with online play. That's all we've wanted. Um, we don't want Super Mario Party, and we don't want Mario Party 10 and 9 with the horrible car. We don't want that. We just want old Mario Party with online play. And Nintendo also gave us Mario Party 1 through 3 on NSO um, with online play. So they know what we want now. Uh, and it would be cool to see a new Mario Party game um, that's just normal and good, but... If this is all we get, I'll take it. I really like Mario Party Superstars. 
one of my favorite Switch games, even though it really shouldn't be because it's just, you know, it's just the work of, I, I don't, I'm not huge on ND Cube. I, I just feel like their games are like whatever. Um, <clears throat> and it's just the work of Hudson that they did over 20 years ago. And that's just fresh coat of paint. I don't know what to say. Mario Strikers Super League. I like the aesthetic and the art style of this and everything, but it was one of those things where I'm like, I don't like soccer, so I'm probably not going to like this game. Um, and I didn't really play much of it because I just don't like soccer. I just, I can't with soccer. Football. It's degenerates would call it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the stance down now. I hate soccer. And uh, that's all I have to say. Sorry to the soccer fans. Um, Mario Tennis Aces. Uh, I would say this is probably the most lackluster of the Mario sports games. Uh, it's not as bad as the Mario tennis game on Wii U, but it's not great. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, one of the weirdest Switch games. This is Nintendo published, developed by um, Team Ninja at Koei Tecmo. One of the strangest, um, <laughs> one of the all-time strangest Nintendo exclusives, but cool. It's fun. It's a fun little beat em up with Marvel characters. Uh, I'm glad that they, you know, didn't stick to, at the time, what was kind of what going on with Marvel, where they didn't own Fox yet, so uh, they weren't really pushing much of X-Men and Fantastic Four and Daredevil. I guess not Daredevil. Um, Daredevil was on Netflix at the time. Um, but, you know, we have all these characters. They're here. Everyone's here. So, uh, pretty fun. I think Fantastic Four was DLC, but you know what I'm saying. Um, fun game. Nothing outstanding, but pretty fun. Master Detective Archives Rain Code. So this is Kazutaka Kodaka's latest game with his studio, um, Tukio Games, that they worked with Spike Chunsoft on this one. Uh, and it is, uh, you can tell with that art style, very Danganronpa-esque. This feels like a natural evolution of what Danganronpa would become. And it's almost like an open-world mystery game, Unreal Engine 4. It's a, one of the better-looking Switch games. And uh, once again, a really high-quality Spike Chunsoft Adventure game, uh, a lot of fun characters, story's crazy. Um, I don't think I would have guessed where the story would end up going <laughs> um, with this one either, so a lot of fun. This is like quintessential um, Danganronpa with just how it's written, the craziness of it, the, the fun of the mysteries and everything. So highly recommend this one as well. Awesome game. Going on here with Mega Man 11. Mega Man 11... Um, it's fine. It's not one of my favorite Mega Man games. It's probably pretty low on my Mega Man list um, because it's just, it's it's fine. You know, it does its job. A lot of games, you know, I wish they would have stuck with this. I know this would never fly. I feel like people would be like, you're charging me 40 bucks or whatever this game is for a freaking pixel art game. But I wish they would have just had this game be pixel art because I, I just don't like 2.5D as much as I like pixel art. But I get it, and as far as the 2.5D looks, it looks pretty good here. Um, it's stylized in a way that looks pretty nice. It's not like, I think a lot of 2.5D, and I think of um, Bloodstained uh, Ritual of the Night, which I just don't think looks very good, but this it looks at least looks pretty nice. It doesn't look like freaking Mighty Number no. 9 or whatever, at least, so. But I'm just not as big on 2.5D. Mega Man Legacy Collection, uh, just solid collections of Mega Man... You know, the classic Mega Man's 1 through 10. Uh, so, pretty cool. Very stupid that they made it a 1 and 2. They should have just made it one whole thing because you got to have the stupid game download code for Legacy Collection 2, which really sucks. Um, 7, 8, 9, 10. So. But Digital Eclipse always does good work with their collections. So, But Capcom, you know, maybe dropped the ball a little bit there. I got some other Mega Man collections. Uh, 10, or 10, I wanna, I wanted to say 10 and 10 too, like Final Fantasy. X and X Legacy Collection 2, um, they did the same stupid thing, even though this one makes less sense because it didn't come out in two different parts like Legacy Collection did. So this one even makes less sense. Um, pretty stupid, but cool to have all these in one place. Honestly, if you don't install Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2, you're not really missing much. Um, and then I've not, I've never played these games at all and I want to play them, so I've, I've kind of saved in this one. Um, the Mega Man Zero and ZX games, so that is pretty cool. I, do, I didn't get the um, Mega Man uh, Battle Network collection. I'd like to get that one, but they're really doing well with these collections. I'd like to see... I mean, all they have left, really, I guess, is um, like 
legends. They could do a legends with that and Tron Bon. I think that could be cool. So keep it up. Another set of collections. I like having these collections on Switch just because it doesn't really matter graphically where they that they're on Switch. And it's also like I have the option, even though I don't use this thing as a portable, I have the option to have this portably. So kind of the same thing here with um, Metal Gear Solid Master Collection. Although this is a bit of a disappointing collection. They kind of phoned this one in. Apparently on other systems it has disc read errors, even if you get the digital version. So that's kind of crazy. But... Um, you know, Konami, they're, they're out of practice or something. I don't know what the, what's up with these guys. They're a bunch of little freaks over there. Um, but, you know, not a, not the best collection, but great games at least. Uh, Metroid Prime Remastered. Uh, Metroid Prime is a stellar game. And, uh, the interesting, the story behind Metroid Prime 2, or, uh, you know, 2, I guess, Metroid Prime, the original game, um, is so fascinating. I recommend looking into it just with the, you know, the guy, I forget his name. Um, he was there, uh, he was, came from, what is that, Iguana, who was in Austin, who was with Acclaim, and they did Turok and stuff, and then he was there, but he was, like, making porn on, at the office on Nintendo's time or something. Crazy story. Metroid Prime is a fantastic game, and this is a great remaster of it. Um, I don't know why they didn't remaster 2 and 3 as well, but... Maybe they will. They probably won't. The Missing. Um, so this is another sweary game. Uh, still have not played this one. I actually will probably keep this sealed because it's a little bit hard to come by. And I have it. I got it for like four dollars on the PlayStation Store. So I'll probably when I want to play it, play it there. But I've heard good things about that one, so I wanted to lock that in. Monster Hunter Rise. I am no beloved Monster Hunter YouTuber, Sky eighty five. So. I've tried with Monster Hunter. It's fine. It's just not really my thing. I, I don't want to. I don't want to put in the time to like really get hardcore into it. I mean, it's fine. It's fun to do with friends, but I just I, I hate playing it by myself. It, it's just not very compelling to me by myself. New Pokemon Snap, uh, the game I feel like everyone asked for for years and years, and then when it actually happened, no one cared. Um, and that includes me because I this is still sealed, on, and so. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. This is a pretty decent little Smash Brothers clone. I've heard the second one is actually a big step up and is actually pretty solid, but this is pretty decent. Game Mill, the publisher, is horrible. They put out the most uh, just at atrocious garbage. They put out that King Kong game that came out this year that was in that Walking Dead game, both which are, like, stunningly bad, um, which I guess makes sense because their name is literally Game Mill. Um, so <laughs> I don't know how you could really expect high quality from them, but... This is a fun, you know, platform fighter. And if you grew up with Nickelodeon, you'll probably like it. I don't know who the heck some of these characters are because I'm, you know, I haven't watched Nickelodeon in years. I don't know who this is, but there's SpongeBob. I know him. Uh, Mr. Krabs not in the game. Squidward not in this game. I think he's in the second one. Squidward is the coolest character. No Squilliam in the game. Um, honestly, no Squilliam in the game. I should probably sell my copy. Comment Squilliam if you're still watching this video at 47 minutes in. Uh, Night Trap. This is limited run, and uh, I just think it's funny that uh, you know they all the court hearings back in the day. Night Trap will never be on a Nintendo system. Howard Lincoln once said, "Now it is. Here it is." Travis Strike Strikes Again. No More Heroes. Uh, I never played this one. I like No More Heroes a lot, but I never played Tra Travis Strikes Again. Um, I just didn't hear it was great, and but I bought this on clearance at Best Buy for like. $15, and now it's kind of a harder one to come by, and I, I'll probably just keep it sealed, because I don't know if I really want to play it, but No More Heroes 3, I would say is the worst No More Heroes game, just kind of a technical disaster, but the gameplay is really fun, um, when you're in combat and everything, everything's 60 frames per second, and it plays really s smoothly and really fun, but it feels like just kind of a half-baked kind of weird game, graphics are horrible, like really bad, and the open world is empty like completely empty like more empty than the freaking wii game from 2008 uh really just too big and pointless and just pads out the game time um still a fun game uh, a lot of crazy and creative stuff in it that i really liked a lot but um overall not you know as good as the other games which i, I still i feel like normal heroes one is just the quintessential just classic um great game and that, that game and the second one have both have great Switch ports. So 
recommend those ones for sure. And three, I would recommend if you liked the first two, but just go knowing and no going into it that it's not amazing. Octopath Traveler. I thought this game was so boring. I'm sorry. I thought this game was so boring. Uh, so I don't know what to tell you. Also, I forgot because it's in a steel book and I put those in a different place in my collection. When we went to Metroid Prime Remastered, I should have had Metroid Dread first. And I think Metroid Dread is awesome. Um, I'm not usually into Metroidvanias, like 2D Metroidvanias. Like, I like Metroid, but more Metroid Prime than, like, Super Metroid. Uh, but Metroid Dread I really enjoyed, so. But I have it in the steel book. I put all my steel books at the end of the collection just because I like the uniform redness and it's just not the same, so. I might forget some things. Um, Paper Mario Origami King. This came out the same day as um, Ghost of Tsushima. And I think you can probably tell which game I chose to play. Phoenix Wright um, Trilogy. This is a Japanese copy. We didn't get this physically in the United States, which is weird because we're getting Apollo Justice Trilogy physically in the United States on Switch, so I don't know. But I got this when I was in Japan last time, and I played through this collection on PlayStation 4, got the Platinum and everything. Um, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy is one of, just one of my all-time favorite pieces of media. I, I It's so great. It's so awesome. Um, if you were to play any game at my recommendation that you haven't played, I would recommend playing the, the original Phoenix Wright Trilogy. And this is a great HD version of it. Um, to play as well, but no matter how you play it, you can't go wrong. Just all-time classics. I have here Persona 5 Tactica, um, but before that I have Persona 5 Royal. Um, Persona 5 Royal is another one of my favorite just all-time things, um, games, media. Uh, I think this game's awesome. My copy sealed, I got the Once More edition for Switch, but I played Royal on PlayStation 4 when it came out. I played Persona 4 or Persona 5 when it came out, and then I played Royal when it came out, I Platinum Royal. Um, very well-worn territory with this one, but it, this is just an all-timer right here. One of the all-time best games, uh, and I would say the greatest JRPG uh, ever made. Um, but cool to have it on Switch. Everything I've seen, the Switch version looks um, very high quality and very well done. Uh, and then Persona 5 Tactica, which I've actually been playing recently. Um, probably about, just about done with it. And I like this one a lot. This is, again, like a Mario and Rabbids XCOM type game, um, strategy game. It has the more chibi art style of Persona, for Persona 5. And the story, I mean, it's fun. It's fine. It's not like, you know, the original Persona 5 story is great. And in the Royal, the stuff they added on for Royal is great. And this is more of just a, oh, here are these characters you like and they're going to do something. But you're going to have this really fun strategy gameplay. Um, highly recommend this one if you like strategy, you know, gameplay like that. And if you like Persona at all. Um, I feel like this one's slipping between the cracks. I think it's just a busy time right now. A lot of games coming out. I didn't see a lot of people talking about this one, so got to give it its dues because I think it's really good. We got some Pikmin. 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 Pikmin 1 and 2. Um, I talked about this on a recent video, but I just like that these games are available. Um, same thing with Pikmin 3. Like The whole series of Pikmin is on the Switch available. And, I, you know, I'm guessing Switch 2 will be backwards compatible and the eShop will be, you know, backwards compatible. So, you know, someone who wants to play Pikmin 1, who was obviously not born, I'm picturing maybe a, you know, 13-year-old wants to play Pikmin 1 in 2035. They can go back and download it. You know, it's an ancient game at this point, but they can go on their, their Switch 2 or Switch 3 and go and download it and play this game for the first time. Um, and I just like that accessibility. I think that's awesome. And I think it just makes sense. Like, it's just essentially... A, I don't like the term free money, but essentially at that point, you know, it's free money just sitting there. Might as well. Um, but, you know, I've played Pikmin 1, 2, and 3 uh, on previous consoles, so I've not played these Switch versions, but I just like to have them. And Pikmin 4, I think Pikmin 4 is one of the best games of the year, and I would also say another, I want to say top 3, but maybe top 5 Switch games in general. It is awesome. It's a stellar game. I 100% at Pikmin 4. And it's such a great game to 100% um, because it is so fun. And then there's some real challenge in this game. If you go deep, you go deep into the 100% challenges, there's some stuff that will make you pull your hair out sometimes. But they're awesome, awesome games. And, guys, I am the biggest Ochi fan to ever walk the earth. Ochi is everything to me. If he were to die, I would just die instantly. Like, I would just be gone. 
I'm such a huge Ochi fan. He's everything. I mean, really and truly. Really and truly. Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Uh, fun idea for what they were going for here, trying to kind of merge, make a second remake of Gen 1, but try to make it a little bit more, uh, I don't know, aligned with Pokemon Go. Uh, so I like that one, that idea. I like games that you can play with one Joy-Con like this because, I don't know, it was one of those days I was playing this one on Thanksgiving break, just kind of lazy, playing it with one hand, um, you know, Pokemon. I feel like you don't really need too much more than one hand to play Pokemon. Um, so we got Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I don't, it's, I don't know, guys. I, I've talked about Pokemon before. It, it's just not for me anymore. Um, the last ones I played through all the way to the end were black and white. Um, but it's just not for me anymore. I just, it's it's good. It's, it's fine for what it is. It's baby's first RPG. Um, and I just, it's not something that I really can <laughs> get too excited for. I like Pokemon as a brand. I like it, you know, the characters and everything, but the games are just, they're made for eight-year-olds. They're not made for me. I'm sorry. I feel like the bigger the piles get, like the further my descent into madness goes. But we're going to keep going on. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Uh, these are remakes of Gen 4 that I don't think Pokemon fans were happy with. Um, this is actually one of the Pokemon games I've enjoyed more lately that I played. I didn't finish it, um, but I enjoyed it more than, <laughs> than like, Sword and Shield and stuff. Um, but these were not even developed by Game Freak. These were developed by Ilka, which is just kind of a four-hire studio. They're making that Bando, Na Bando Namco, Bandai Namco Sandland game based from the manga. Um, so, do with that information as you will. Uh, Pokemon Legends Arc. Oh, I have, um, as far as mainline too, I didn't even, I bought this double pack and then I saw the state that this game was in and I, I didn't bother to play it. Um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you know, you know, Pokemon. Pokemon Legends Arceus, I was kind of excited for this one to have it like something new for the series. Uh, and I saw a bunch of people loving this game, but I also feel like the people who really loved this game are people who only play Nintendo and have not played another open world game besides Bre Breath of the Wild. Because I was like, I, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, it's whatever. I got, I didn't finish it. I was, I thought it was boring. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so, uh, the Pokemon. I like Pokemon. I like the brand, but it just, the games do nothing for me really right now. I don't know what it is. Ring Fit Adventure, um, really weird, bizarre idea, really cool idea that Nintendo went went and did. Um, I appreciate them for doing this, uh, and it's actually, I mean, it's a workout. I'm not gonna lie, it is uh, more than I, I. I remember getting it during COVID and messing around with it. I was like, man, this is more than I bargained for after being inactive for months. You know, got some shimmy gimme tenses, uh, Nocturne HD. And five, I've not played Nocturne HD. Five, I started, and I want to get back to one day and just restart it. I thought it was interesting, but I just wasn't in the right place for a turn-based game like that. Um, <clears throat> I should probably clarify: when I have a bunch of ga games that are sealed, they're games I want to have for the collection, and they're all games for the most part I'd like to play one day. Um, so when I do garage selling and stuff, which is a main focal point of this channel, um, I get a lot of games for like dirt cheap. Or sometimes even they end up being free after I sell other stuff that I can't do much with. So I trade a lot of that stuff to GameStop just because it's so cheap. I can't do anything with it. They'll take it. And I'll just get games that I, you know, want to have in the collection that I'd like to play one day. You know, some sometimes I won't have to worry about them going out of print. But some games, you know, go out of print. So odds are a lot of my Switch collection was paid for with, you know, trade credit stuff like that. Not all of it. The stuff that I, you know, play... And have played is you know usually paid for uh, and even sometimes that's paid for with trade credit so just something in mind i'm not throwing down whatever 50 bucks or whatever nocturne was and just wasting it uh i probably put five dollars into a bunch of trade credit stuff i had and at garage sales to get it for that so something to keep in mind no one's watching this video 59 minutes in but silver case 2425 these are um pseudo 51 
grasshopper games, kind of the original games. They were Japanese only on PlayStation, maybe somewhere else. I don't know. And what on earth is going on with the camera? It does not like these darker covers. Uh, I'd like to play these because they're supposed to be supposed to be pretty cool um, adventure games, but I've just not gotten around to them yet. Signalis. So this is an indie horror game. I've heard it's kind of like Space Silent Hill. I I got I tried it out, but I just couldn't get into it um, at the time. Something I would like to give another chance, but just not one I could get into at the time. South Park Fractured Butthole. Um, I liked this game. I thought it was fun. I, I don't think I've ever seen a full episode of South Park in my entire life, but uh, this was a pretty fun RPG. Pretty funny. Um, good stuff. Enjoyed it. Good Switch version of the game, too. Uh, this was kind of an early Switch, you know, third-party game. I remember playing it um, when I went to Japan for the first time, like on the plane and, and the airports and stuff. This Splatoon 2, which is a game I've talked about a lot, just in the idea that I was pretty disappointed with online with it. Um, and then Splatoon 3, I feel like, just fixed the problems I had with Splatoon 2. And But Splatoon 2, 3 was just not something I stuck on to very long. I like Splatoon a lot. And I think it's a lot of fun, um, but it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, I just didn't stick, didn't stick onto it too long. But something I like to get back into with my friends at some point because I think Splatoon is just a f overall fun concept for an online multiplayer game. Streets of Rage Four, um, very very good. Uh, just a classic beat 'em up Streets of Rage game. The Streets of Rage on Genesis and everything. All timers as far as beat em ups go. I'm not some kind of beat em up connoisseur, but I really appreciate them. Got that awesome Yuzo Koshiro uh, soundtrack, and this one is just very, very well done. I like the art style for this one too. If you're not going to have, you know, pixel art in your games, at least have a cool, you know, distinct art style. And it's always weird, you know, dot dot emo dot dot emu. I believe is how they're pronounced. They're French, so I, I shouldn't give them too much respect, but. I just think they're doing, you know, good stuff here, but it's just so weird that, like, Sega just licensed this stuff out, and they're like, yeah, just do whatever. Merge. You can publish this, I guess. It's like, I don't know. And then now Sega's doing that stuff with the, uh, you know, bringing back Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio, and it's like, you guys have been, you know, licensing House of the Dead out to, like, Forever Entertainment and putting out, like, a 5 out of 10 remake of your games. What are you guys doing? Starlink Battle for Atlas. This was $8 with the full set and everything this is the worst back of any game i've ever seen in my life all these warnings um it was like eight dollars i thought the r wing was cool and that's in storage somewhere in the game is here and i never played either uh super Mario man R, a uh switch launch game that sold a bunch of copies because it's a switch launch game um and it's bomber man it's fun it's it's a bomber man there's probably more in-depth bomber man games and more content complete bomber man games but this one's fun i like this art style i like the cover I always thought Bomberman 33rd anniversary was very weird to put up front and center, but what do I know? I've never even played Detective Pikachu Returns. Uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, still one of the weirdest rollouts for anything ever where they just took it off the <laughs> Switch eShop and they stopped selling it. Very strange, but um, a good way to play these games, I would say. And it's just crazy how well Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy hold up uh, both visually and graphically, they still look fantastic, and, and then just, they play well. Mario Sunshine, I was playing a little bit, and I stopped because I was like, I really liked this game, and I can see that it's not, some of the design's a little bit goofy, not aged amazingly, but visually, you look at something like Mario Sunshine, you're like, man, this game's over 20 years old? How? <laughs> How did that happen? And Mario Galaxy, of course, an all-timer. Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Uh, Mario 3D World's always been one that, you know, I've enjoyed quite a bit. I played through this 100% actually online with Sky 5 Beloved Monster Hunter YouTube, um, YouTuber. And we did Champions Road and everything online. The uh, online is serviceable. Um, it's not always great, but it, it'll do. And uh, I just like this game quite a bit. And Bowser's Fury, just a fun, interesting little Mario experiment, I guess. I don't know what they're going to ever do with this, but... Uh, what it was, I thought, was really cool way of kind of taking the 3D Mario formula. Um, but give me more Odyssey. I want to see more Odyssey. Uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Haven't finished Wonder yet. Um, but what I played of it, I think, is awesome. I really like the aesthetic. And I'm pretty impressed with, you know, how it is. But just wasn't crazy about the multiplayer. But 
Haven't finished it yet. I'll have to get into it. Never played Mario Maker 2. I got it with trade credit, like I said, but never played it. It's just one of those things, I don't know, I'm not creative enough for Mario Maker. Like, I don't have any inclination to make Mario Maker levels. And then I, I also remember Mario Maker on Wii U, and maybe Mario Maker 2 is different, but I remember Mario Maker on Wii U, like, a lot of the created levels were just kind of crap. I hear there's some good Nintendo created levels in this game, um, but I don't know. At this point, I'd, I'll just finish Wonder, if I'm if anything, which I do plan on finishing Wonder, but... You know, that's higher up on the list of priorities than playing the created levels on Mario Maker 2. Mario Odyssey, I would say, is my favorite Switch game. I just think this game is, like, the epitome of fun. Uh, it's just a blast to play. The movement is so solid. The worlds are really fun to explore, and I think it still looks really nice. And I like the cap mechanic and the different ways you can use that. Just a, just a ton of fun. I mean, just peak, really. Uh, I like Mario Odyssey quite a bit. One of the most exciting games when it came out, I remember, back in 2017. I think October 24th, 2017. Just very exciting. Super Mario Party. It's um, not the worst Mario Party, but this was one of those things where it's like, I guess, you know, it's better than what we were getting, but it's still not great. And I'm just glad that we have Super or Superstars now. This one just came out. Uh, it came out the same day as Persona 5 Tactica, so I've been playing that, but I want to get into this one soon. Super Mario RPG, the remake of it. Uh, I think this is really cool. This was developed by Art Art Piazza, Arte Piazza. I don't know. I'm, I don't speak Italian. Um, uh, they're a Japanese studio anyway. Uh, <laughs> and they were known for like the Dragon Quest remakes and stuff on the DS and 3DS. Uh, this was developed by them, so that's kind of a good fit. And everything I've seen, I've never finished the original Super Mario RPG. Everything I've seen, this is a good, RP, uh, good uh, remake, so looking forward to trying it out soon. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. This is a, a kind of, a, I guess, that takes a lot of the classic Monkey Ball and kind of remakes it, kind of morphs it. And it is fun. It doesn't feel quite right. I think something about Monkey Ball is lost in this. Um, I don't think the movement feels quite right. And I also just, I don't know, something about the more primitive 3D art style of Monkey Ball on GameCube, I think, just serves it a lot better. But still fun. And uh, Monkey Ball, in general, is just a blast. Very underrated for how awesome it is. Tough as nails. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I mean, there's not much to say about Smash Brothers Ultimate that hasn't already been said. I mean, just a very impressive game. Just how much content there is, how many characters there are. The DLC was a ton of fun to follow. Um, although they ended it with a fart, putting in stupid Sora from Kingdom Hearts. More like Kingdom Farts, am I right, guys? No one's listening this far in, so I can say whatever I want to. Um, but, I mean, there, it, it's just a ton of fun. Just another top five Switch games. Another all-timer. Uh, really well done. We're still going with the Switch games, guys. It's uh, Sushi Striker. I got this game for $5 on Amazon. It's by Indie Zero. I, 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 apparently the 3DS version is better because of the two screens. How far would you go for sushi? I don't know. I'm not huge on sushi, to be honest. I know it's not really my thing. <sighs> Six games in one time management game collection. This was brand new at GameStop for $2.50. And I, I went to use my um, trade credit card that I had. And then they said, actually, you have a $5 thing. You want to put this on it? And then they refunded $2.50 or, you know, you know, minus tax, I guess, to uh, the... Uh, <laughs> card so i actually somewhat made money on this somehow um very weird i just thought this was so funny that this they made a physical version of this gs2 games it just publishes i mean look how bad their logo is just look how bad their logo is you think their games are good like they just publish horrible horrible shovelware to the switch and um i just thought that this was funny that this even got a physical release like just they're just horrible little turd games and this got a physical release somehow I thought it was funny. Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Sharp FE Encore. Um, one of the more underrated Wii U games. That is now one of the more underrated Switch games. Uh, this game never really... No one no one ever really paid attention to this one. But I like it a lot. I think it's a really fun RPG with one of the most f like fun uh, combat systems that I've ever seen in a turn-based RPG. It is very 
uh, exciting to just try to string together different combos and stuff. I think this game's a ton of fun. The story is fluff. It's it's nothing. Um, but the combat and just overall uh, the music and stuff like that, it's a great time. Um, it's supposed to be... This was originally announced as the Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem um, game, but obviously kind of morphed into something a little bit more... Per- it's like Diet Persona in a way. Um, and the characters are fun and everything. It's a good time. Recommend that one quite a bit uh, for JRPG fans. Triangle Strategy. I remember when this was called Project Triangle Strategy. They got rid of the project at some point. Um, and another 2D HD game that I've not played too much of. Undertale. I played Undertale on Vita. I was late to the party. I didn't play it on PC. And I, I think it's really cool. Music is classic, of course. But um, I like it. I think it's awesome. I think it's really clever and really funny and just overall good time. This is one of the sleeper games of this gen too. Uh, no one talks about how awesome it is, but it's one of the best. A bunch of stuff just fell out of the case. So let me put that back in. Valkyria Chronicles 4. So Valkyria Chronicles, I think, is Sega's like most underrated series. It is so good. Um... This series is fantastic. The first one is great. Two and three are a little bit kind of different. Three never came out over here, so you don't have to play these in order. You can just pick up four um, and give it a go. I think it's awesome. Um, the first game is also great. They're both great. You can get them for cheap on the... The first one didn't come out physically, but you can get it on the eShop, and it's always pretty cheap. And this game, I think, on the eShop is cheap. I don't know about physical copies of this one, but highly recommend Valkyria Chronicles, either one or four. Um, really fun strategy. Uh, kind of real-time turn-based strategy games. Just just great. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Another one that I just highly recommend. No one talks about Valkyria Chronicles enough because it is just stellar. We're still going. We're still going. WarioWare, get it together. Um, this is one of those games that I just feel like was way too expensive from Nintendo. Like... 50 bucks for this one when it came out, and it's a fun WarioWare game, but I feel like you can see everything it has to offer in, like, three hours, maybe. Uh, it's fun, it's enjoyable, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it at full price or anything, um, unless you're, like, a diehard WarioWare fan. But, I mean, it's fun for what it is, I liked it, but... This one came out recently, I got it. Best Buy had their buy two get one free sale, so this was one I just kind of threw in there. Um, WarioWare Move It. And this is like a follow-up to Smooth Moves, more motion-controlled. Kind of interesting that, you know, Get It Together came out 2021. This came out 2023. So we got, like, you know, close together two WarioWare games. So interesting. But I think War- Move It probably got a little overshadowed just by a lot of stuff coming out. World's End Club. So this was from Tukio Games. This is what they did before... Um, Master Detective Archives Rain Code, this was the game that they did. It's not very good, I don't think, I hate to say. Um, it's it just not very good. And they did a game that was an FMV game before this one. It was their first game that they did as 2Q Games. It was called Death Come True. It's on the eShop only, and it's it's not it's not physical. And that one I don't think was very good either. So I was a little bit worried for Rain Code, but it ended up being pretty good. Uh, I do like the character designs in this game, um, but just a lot of the other... It's just, I don't know, just didn't really feel worth worthwhile. World Ends With You Final Remix, and the World Ends With You, Neo World Ends With You is what it's called. This is another one. I've just not got into these games. I feel like I'd really like them if I, I... I tried the original one on DS, but it just wasn't clicking at the time. I feel like I really like them, but just have not got into them. But once again, I wanted to get them before they you know go out of print or whatever. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I think the first Xenoblade Chronicles game is so awesome. Such a stellar game. Um, And it's so good to finally have it on a system where it's, like, not hideous. You know, the Wii version, this game was punching way above its weight for the Wii. Um, And then we get it ported downward to the new 3DS, which I actually played that version of it, too. I originally played through the game on Wii, and then I remember playing the new 3DS version... For about 20 hours. And then this is just a great version of the game. It just looks good. It's the same awesome game. With amazing music. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles is really stellar. So I take no joy in saying 
that I really didn't like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I never finished it because I just didn't like it. I I kind of hate the characters. I'm, I, I, I'm gonna, I'll just say, I hate the characters. I, I just, I don't. I know people love these characters. I'm like, this. these guys suck. I hate them. Um, but I just, there's there's a lot of just, it's it feels clunky with a lot of its systems and a lot of its mechanics that I'm just not huge on. And it doesn't explain itself very well. Um, I mean, it's not like super complex, but it just doesn't explain itself really well. And it puts up roadblocks in your way that aren't exactly fun. And, and the voice acting is horrendous and I don't, I don't know what they were doing with this one. So, not exactly one of my favorites. But, luckily, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, despite me not finishing because it's a huge game, I think is also very, very good. I really liked Xenoblade Chronicles 3 a lot. I mean, I played like 30 hours of it. So, you know, probably like a third of the way through the game. But, I think it's really cool. And I wish I, I, wish I could just have the time to play through these, even two with all the DLC, because I hear it really ends up being, like, worthwhile and ends up being really cool, but it's just, there's so much, there's so many games, guys. Like, I can't be wasting my time on Yoshi's Crafted World. Um, I, I didn't like this one. I thought the music was horrendous, but I just thought it was kind of boring. Uh, I thought Yoshi's Woolly World was really a, a very good game, but Yoshi's Crafted World was, I think, a big step down. Um, it's fine. It's, I mean, it's, it's the definition of fine. Like, if you have kids, maybe it would be a good game to get them started on gaming. But just for me, a true, true gamer, no good. Um, Ease 9, I kind of did a Falcom uh, buy everything they get put out so I, they don't go out of print. But I'm more probably likely to get to this one sooner than the Trails Legend of Heroes games. Um, Yuru Kill, the Calumination games. This, I've heard, was a weird like mash between a visual novel adventure game and a space shooter and i've heard it's pretty interesting and pretty cool i got it for cheap and I'd, I'd like to give it a go at some point just i thought that that the pitch on that was so interesting and then i'm out of order here a little bit but wonderful 101 remastered i kickstarted this this was one of the dumbest thing i could have kickstarted i kind of hate platinum for this because they could have just ported this game like why did they need a kickstarter to give them like money other than it just gave them money uh, but i kickstarted it for a you know a copy of the game um, and then I never played this version. I like the Wii U version a lot, but I never played the Switch version. So that is, that is life, I guess. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I just talked about the Nintendo Switch and my games for the system for an hour and 16 minutes straight. So, um, you can see I'm starting to get a little bit exhausted by this. So, uh, I appreciate everyone for watching. Let me know what games I should add to my collection that aren't already in the collection. Uh, if there's any games that I mentioned that I haven't played yet that I should give a go, uh, make sure to let me know as well. And just let me know your overall favorite Switch games in general, too. Um, and what Switch games you're looking forward to coming out next year. Because there's, I mean, this thing is still cranking out a lot of games. So, looking forward. I'm looking forward to the Another Code um, kind of, I don't know if it's a, I guess a remake. Looking forward to those games. So, some good stuff still coming out next year. So, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're already subscribed. And until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching.